in this part two of this uh, tuning series of this fantastic app, we're going to analyze this tile. The active rule that generates CRE event. As before, we select the time frame where we want this to actually work. So let me put this back a couple of days and apply that and it's going to make the analysis. So that's so it's going into my uh, system and looking at, at, at those rules and comes with the graphic. Now, very important thing, click here and you have this in, in every one of these uh, tiles to understand and, and see that th there can be some rules that, for example, dispatch a lot of events, but they don't fire an offense or they do. I mean, it's really the one thing is not directly tied to another. Let me actually explain what I actually mean by that. Let me actually go into any rule. I'm going to go to the noises one in here. After I go to the introduction, I go here. I'm going to use the uh, the rules wizard to understand that. When you click to the second page, this rule is in this report because you have this patch a new event, and that's this is the type of uh, offense uh, rules, not offenses, because this may or may not dispatch uh, an, an offense. As you see in here, this rule does not. It doesn't have here ensure that the detected event is part of an offense. And that's very common on the UBA rules because they don't fire offenses. They are at risk of this in this particular case, the same value equal fisting to a particular user. So again, one example in which you want to, if you want to tune your noisy rules that generates a lot of events, well, this is the place for actually doing versus the other tile in which you see the rules that are the most active. So this, I think, explains well the difference between the two. Let's go back in here and let's analyze any one of these uh, rules. Uh, let's look at this picture. And the, the methodology is the same that we used in the previous video. You click in here, you analyze the actual rule. There's only one test condition. Yeah. And of, of course, here in responses, you're going to see dispatch a new event because that's what we are uh, in here. And here in action, you will see that uh, in this, this one in particular does fire an offense. So this one you can find in both. And notice the graphic that explain the actual relationship in a, in a graphic way. Very nice. So you can actually, the, the, the tool will guide you and say, well, go into review the, those CRE events. These are the ones that fire in, in my offenses. Populate the reference sets. And here is, you know, the file hashes that for, that for Petya. And you have, uh, again, you can bring these down and see all those. And you can go into every one of those uh, reference sets and make sure that they are actually populated. Uh, it can be that these are actually populated by some uh, external uh, stick and taxi feed that provide that information. Here, review the network building blocks. This is actually an interesting case in, in which uh, the way that Curator detects the presence of PETJA is by this pattern in the actual payload. This is, so, so you need to have, you know, uh, Q flows for this one uh, to work. This is a very effective way of detecting even variations of uh, the PETJA. And here you go and do the same thing for the uh, endpoint building blocks. Another way that this can be very useful is notice that it really tells you how many IPs, both source IP and destination IP, are related to this particular rule. So in this particular case, we see that there are a multitude of IPs. If you see, for example, one IP that, that is actually contributing to many rules, I don't seem to have that as the case in here, uh, then you may, you may want to say, well, Actually, this is a kind of a good one. Malicious website. Well, may maybe sh that, that can be a case in which we actually investigate that one. I haven't looked at this one in particular, but it could be that I don't have uh, the, the, the right information and which are my malicious sites. 
Okay, here are the uh, CRE events that fire on this one. And here are the log sources building blocks. Now, this actually invites you to make sure that you have your proxy represented in any one of these uh, building blocks. Great way of complementing the, what we saw in the first part of the video, in the first tile of the noisy rules with the, those that generate lots of events, dispatches uh, uh, lots of events.